Well, good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone else, and welcome back to Rugby School. We're here at the close on Old Big Side, one of the oldest rugby playing pitches on the world, at the oldest playing rugby institution, celebrating their 200th year of the creation of the game. I'm Wilfred Kemsley, live with Next Gen, bringing you all of their fixtures throughout this first half of the season, and rugby continue their hectic opening schedule here, live against Bedford School. A really thrilling encounter. Two sides yet to win in this year's edition of the Daily Mail Cup rankings. But it's rugby that will be hoping to continue their long unbeaten streak against Bedford, who haven't won here since 2010. It'll be Bedford in the red first onto the field as rugby finish off their ferocious warm up all in white. You know, with us, of course, on Wednesday when rugby fell to that uh, defeat to Haleybury. They were 21-8 up at half-time, but eventually lost that game by 27-26. to 26. Followed up their first game loss to a very talented Oakham side. Bedford lost to Aundall at home last week. Aundall's first away win there in five years. And both sides have rung in plenty of changes ahead of this fixture. Callum George will be a referee. And it's a beautiful day here at rugby. Really perfect conditions for, as we run you through the team. So changes in the pack for rugby. Will Hosking comes in for Hugh Salveson. Robert Gaffan of Northampton Saints is the captain. Pietro Cecinato and Monroe Hogg come in for their first start at five and six. And in the back line, Oscar Tebbit drops to the bench. Luke Shravasande comes in, the former Sharks number nine. Jordan Stridham starts at 10, moving from 12 to replace Alfie Coburn, who drops to the bench as well. And Rufus Pierce, at vice captain, is in for his first start since a long-term injury that he sustained at the under-18 International Sevens here at Rugby a few weeks into the end of last season. Coached, of course, by Mike Bailey and Sam Ponton on in charge as head coaches today. And this Bedford team as well have rung in plenty of changes. Players to highlight, of course, Johnny Vyman and Freddie Drake Lee, a try scorer versus Aundel at nine and ten. Edward Bryars, his second year as a consistent starter in the front row, alongside Oscar Barker in for Worthington, and Zach De Gale, the rugby scholar, finished their front row. Fergus Tongue and Harry Payne in the second row with Rupert Cracknell. William Gallagher in for his first appearance, following his appearance in Bedford's Team of the Week as part of their school side. And Ben Granger at number eight. Max Innes and Arthur Proctor in the centres and lots of changes to the back three. Oliver Smith in for Wire Roberts. Ben Agbenu moves to 14 and Oliver Simmons come in, comes in for Bymolan from the bench. It'll be Bedford and Red to get us underway. Freddie Drake Lee, the captain, with kicking responsibilities. So Bedford play from left to right in this first half. That's Callum George. Looks to get us underway as we establish our linesman. Well, it's going to be a long and impressive season for rugby school. Regardless of their results, something truly special brewing here. And Bedford, grateful to be a part of it. As they loft the ball into the overcast sky, collected well in the air. And Shavrasande has it at the base. Good hard running from Granger. Oh, my Jack Roberts, sorry, in the white of rugby as they look to go expansive or first play. Lovely offload out of contact. That's a first run from the Hero Wada. Looks so impressive in that Roslyn Park winning side. Little show and go by Strydham at 10. Rugby school driving their way up the field. Another hard line from Roberts of Midland Central. Stridham. Oh, he wants more, and rugby look to break the line, and they have done. They're slipping in behind here early on. Lovely lofted pass out wide, just juggled and well gathered in the end. And rugby in behind here for the first time. Gaffan, the captain at first receiver, driven back by Gallagher. Trevor Sande again to Stridham, and this time it's Hosking with a hard carry. Good counter ruck by De Gale, but Stridham comes away with it once more. 
Nathaniel Kayala takes contact. Roberts breaks the first tackle, past the gain line again. Travis Sande, Stridham, lovely hard running by Canvin. Up to the 22, looks to flick the ball away, but it's just spilt. Monroe Hogg almost under the sticks there, and now Bedford with Ben Granger with ball in hand. Look to recover. What a line by James Canvin, moved from lock to front row after the first game. This is second appearance at tight head, and that was a lovely carry that almost had rugby under the sticks for the perfect start. A great patient attacking build up. And the young lads in white so early on here. Great initial break by Rufus Pierce, the vice captain. His very first start of the season. Bedford come off an impressive season, winning the bowl at the Merkiston Festival last year. 10 wins from their 18 fixtures in total. Well, we'll call back to last season's cracker between these two. 29 all that game ended between Bedford and rugby. That was ended a strong of heavy defeats that Bedford had to contend with but they've won that scrum and they're looking to play from right out inside their 22 and they could be away here Drake Lee gives him the out wide channel put to the toe by Oliver Simmons and an excellent exit all things considered rugby have the line out just outside of their 10 meter mark Well, that's just a taste of what's to come from the captain, Freddie Drake Lee. Try scoring in their first game as he looks to link up with Max Innes, who's moved from 15 to replace Agbenu, who's been shifted onto the wing. And that line out been stolen as well. So away come Bedford with it, shoots out of the back of that breakdown. It's messy stuff. The lofted ball will free up some space in the playground here for Bedford to run at this. Rugby defence and the pass just behind Agbenu. Ben Agbenu, one to watch in the 14 shirts, had a flying start to the season with Northampton Saints under 18s. Another try scorer versus Aundel. They fell 24 21 in that game. A hard fought defeat. Last season, they knocked up some impressive wins against Dulwich and Halebury, who uh, rugby fell to on just Wednesday here at the close another restart on the 10 this time it's scrum possession Trevor Sande will feed Hoskin and Canvin seem to have the better of their opposite numbers in that first scrum and once again it's secure ball for Trevor Sande stride him at 10 Rufus Pierce at first receiver looks to find Kayada at 12 but the ball is loose and now Bedford come away with it, little loop around the corner for Smith. Dug out by Feynman, he flicks it away excellently well. And now Drake Lee bursting through the contact. Good quick ball then for Bedford, who will pass the gain line through Granger once more. Down the short side then, Drake Lee cutting inside two more. Feynman and Drake Lee linking up already. Innes at first receiver, flicks it on once more. Rugby are in the breakdown, hunting for the turnover, and they've got it, but it was a penalty advantage for the men in red. All the way back on the 22. Great transition there from Bedford. On the phone to one, Will Roberts, of course. Great friend of next gen, and uh, certainly very knowledgeable about Bedford, who tipped this to be a tight game. Both sides searching for their first win of the season. Rugby school have Aundel, of course, up next, who have already beaten this Bedford side. So a real marker if they can come away with a victory here on old big side. But at the moment, they've got a five-meter line out to defend. Claimed in the air by Granger. Flick down the short side, they go. And that's the opening score. And it's a lovely, well-worked move. And it's put Bedford past that white line in the early stages. Clever stuff from Bedford, and it's Rupert Cracknell 
I believe, who's gone over the number six. Part of Bedford School's Team of the Year last season. And in his first appearance for the first team, as a try off the base of the mall. It was Harry Payne in the end who claimed it, and then they cut down the short side. Granger with the offload. Perfect start away from home for Bedford. And now the chance for some uh, crucial added extras. If anyone has been watching the World Cup recently, you know how important every point is. They look to build up a scoreline away from home. It's a great strike. It's a wonderful kick. Two points is the conclusion from that conversion attempt. Well, Cracknell with the opening score from a well-worked line-out move and the conversion by Freddie Drake Lee from all the way out wide puts Bedford seven points up in these opening stages live here at Rugby School. It'll be up for the men in white to respond with their first attacking set. Almost when they've scored themselves. And there's the restart from Strydon, claimed well once more by Harry Payne. Into the backfield they go, charged down excellently well by Jake Roberts. And that exit didn't go to plan for Bedford, who are under a little bit more pressure here. The long arms of Jake Roberts. Fancies himself as a Gaelic football player in the summer as well. A really talented sportsman. Fred! And now Barker with the throw. Claimed well in the air by Fergus Tongue, whose brother represented the first team at this level. But a loose pass in midfield, latched onto by Rupert Pierce of rugby. And as a knock-on advantage for them to play with. Canvin at first receiver. Hard running from him. Travis Sande wants more. But a second knock on there. Means we'll go back for the rugby scrum. Well, we've seen Bedford uh, look to play from inside their own 22 before. This time it's come back to bite them. And they could be under some pressure here from a rugby scrum that has the better of the men in red so far. Edward Bryars and Zach DeGale will look to... Uh, Stand strong here under the pressure of this rugby scrum. Sharasande with the feed. Picked at the base by Jake Roberts, but spilt, and that's a huge opportunity that goes begging for rugby school. Perfect outcome, really, for Bedford in only their second game of the season. Their next game, Radley College, who they put 50 points on last year. So perhaps there at the beginning of a winning run, we'll see how the rest of this fixture unfolds. It's Johnny Myman, whose brother played at number eight last year in the first team. Lyman at number nine, out the back they go, and it's Agbenu with a bit of space, and look at him go, hurling away from rugby defenders. He's through another tackle, eventually chopped down by Mitchell. And a foot in touch, up goes the linesman's flag. What a lovely break from Ben Agbenu. Was in the centres last week, moved out on the wing today give himself a little bit more space perhaps and look what he can do with it another simple play from uh, Bedford they've got their exit plan in place and now rugby have a line out they'll look to steal two jumpers in the air for Bedford but a lovely claim in the end by Leo Robertson Travis Sande hard runners Chechnyanato. 
Travis Sande again, this time with the South African strider at first receiver. Little miss pass, goes awry, swept up by Mitchell. In for Jack Drew for his first start of the season. Carves up a bit of space, but chopped down well by Bedford. Show and go from the skipper, Gaffan. Still through the forwards, they'll look to play. Payne went fishing for it, but found no one. It's another lovely line, but spilt once more, unfortunately, by Jake Roberts. And Bedford have some transition ball to play with. Little snipe from Vyman. Vyman, the vice captain at nine. Now there's no one home for Bedford. But they've got the ball in the hands of Freddie Drake Lee. Kick charge down, little show and go from Rufus Pierce, who gathers once more. And they freed up the ball again. Have rugby school. Lovely offload to keep the ball in play. Canvin takes contact. Up to halfway. Penalty advantage goes the way of rugby. So they'll play a little bit more openly here. Pierce with the offload. Lovely work. And now rugby are in behind once more. It's into the hands of Wada. Wada with one to beat. Cuts on the inside. And it's a wonderfully well-worked score by Rugby. The Hiru Wada. Dangerous with uh, ball in space, as he's shown there with that great one-on-one. -on -one. But from the turnover, Rufus Pierce with a lovely offload to free up the space. And then it was one pass into the hands of the Hiru Wada. Cuts on the inside of... The on-rushing Johnny Vyman. A great score. Now Jordan Stridham has the opportunity to add the extras. And once they knew the penalty advantage was there, Rufus Pierce was straight into the line, wanting to run with ball in hands. And a well-worked two-on-one. Great finished. Hiru Wada speaks three languages already, the young rugby player looking to learn his fourth at A-level now. A really uh, well-established young group. Two points added as well. So seven all the score remains, 10 minutes in to this thrilling game. A 29 all draw, of course, the last time these two met. And Bedford haven't recorded a win since 2012. That's the last time the men in red came away victorious against rugby school. Drake Lee with an excellent kick, which has found a red shirt fantastically well. Overgoes Payne to secure the ball, and now they'll play with ball in hand, just spilt at first receiver. Oscar Barker, unlucky there, in for Worthington for his first start. Well, you can see over on the far side, of course, Bedford's second team take on rugby second team as well. And uh, we may see a few of those lads in the red and white come over to play for this Bedford side. That's where their substitutes will come from, if any. But it's a rugby scum here for Luke Travisande, a former shark in South Africa. Lovely line by Pierce, who gets the offload away. Huge tackle comes in, though, on Kayada to turn it over. And now Simmons with the ball on the outside, but it's a loose pass. No advantage coming, and well, Nathaniel Kayada's come off worse from that contact. Lovely interplay between himself and his centre partner, Pierce, but crunching tackle came in to dislodge the ball. And we'll have a break in play. Oh, Kayada. Looks after himself. Well, R Robert Gaffer and the captain not happy with that tackle. Callum George explaining that uh, all was well in his eyes. And the coaches will get the message on. James Hinkins in charge of Bedford. Semi-professional player in his day at the Bedford Blues. Also player coach while he was there. Now well settled into life at Bedford as we have another look at the try here. It's a really well-worked move taken out of the air by Harry Payne. He found himself in Bedford's team of the week last year. Offloads the ball well. And then this is the wonderful break from Pierce. Frees up the hands well. Simple two on one. 
And a lovely finish from Wada. Bedford's uh, also got uh, Max Roger titled the head of athletic development, an extremely qualified strength and conditioning coach. So it'll be a fit and firing Bedford side who rugby have to take down today. Charge of rugby at rugby school, of course, Mike Bailey. Points all the way back in 2017. Former coach in super rugby. Has had a fantastic time here at rugby school, oversaw some truly excellent moments like uh, their under 18 tournament that like Next Gen brought you here back in the summer. A true exhibition of uh, rugby and an exhibition of what a great community the sport is as well. It seems that for now at least, Nathaniel Kayada will be leaving the field. We'll restart then with a scrum for Bedford from the knock on there. Scrum then for Bedford. And the Reds come away with it. Wyman with a great offload into the hands of Proctor. There's a foot in touch there, according to the linesman. Good surge from Proctor. Well, it's Alfie Coburn who's come on to replace Kayada in the centres. Coburn started at 10 last on Wednesday. Dropped to the bench after that game against Haleybury. Former Saracens and Scottish exile. Line out for rugby. Well, good take from Roberts. Great throw from Gaffan. And now they look to break inside their 22. William... It's Jack Brown there, takes contact. Good drive from Gaffan as well. Travis Sande, Coburn's at 10. Coburn's first touch, lovely lofted pass. And it's good interplay from the forwards that could allow them in behind once again. Well, it's a lovely running from Will Hoskin, but the offload straight into the hands of William Gallagher in his first appearance for Bedford first team and now they'll look to break. Cracknell, the try scorer taking contact. Now the back they go once more. Agbenu looking to take on rugby. Through the hole goes Agbenu. Agbenu with one to beat on the outside. Back comes Wada to make the tackle. Momentum now with Bedford. It's just been spilled at the base by Simmons. Knock on is the call and we'll come back for a scrum, but great tackle from Wada and then looking to play as quickly as possible. I think it just catches the leg of Fergus Tongue, whose brother was in the first team as well last season. Bedford have a strong sense of uh, family connection throughout their First 15. Well, rugby have escaped from that turnover, but they looked to go all the way. It was Will Hosking who went through the hole. Not the, li not the most likely forward to have running in green space. Couldn't find the support, and well, Bedford looks so dangerous on the transition. Hank Benu looked to be. Uh, all on his own with no options in the backfield, but he cut through the hole that Will Hosking left. It's a lot to ask of the front row forward to mark one of the quickest men on the field today. Scrum then for rugby. They just broke from a similar position on the field. And with, with one final pass, they would have gone all the way. Coburn returns at 10, loose ball, but pops up for Wada. All the way wide they go. It's Harry Tannett, part of that Roslyn Park winning side last year as well. Hard line by Roberts. He's run plenty of those so far today. 
and there's an advantage for rugby. Free ball then. Gaffan, little show and go, bursting through the tackles. Travisande. Canvin, lofted ball. But they had ball to play with, so James Camden doesn't need to be too disappointed. Well, there's the penalty there for not rolling away. And uh, good defence from Bedford to contain rugby this time, but Jordan Strydham, the South African, will kick for touch, and it's an excellent kick as well. Into Bedford's half, rugby go. And with their excellent line-out, you'd expect for them to keep hold here. Bedford throwing two jumpers up at a time. Robert Gaffan, the captain, still able to thread the needle. Plenty of jumping options in there. Leo Robertson and Pietro Cecchinato with his first start in for Sam Bird of the Leicester Tigers on the bench today. Now line out ball one there, Coburn. Little inside ball from Pierce and Coburn just flat, chips it over the top. Waders on to chase. But the penalty goes the way of Bedford. Excellent take from Wado. His eyes lit up there. Wonderful little nudge from Coburn. Offside is the call. And Drake Lee keen to get us back underway. His turn now to find touch. And just about makes it into rugby's half. Over goes Oscar Barker to take the line out. Real tight game here at the close. Nothing to split these two sides. Both seem to be able to create such excellent attacking opportunities with the little time they spend with the, on their phase play. Excellent work by Wyman to get it away. Drake Lee looking for Agbenu in the pocket once more. Agbenu puts it to the toe. But it's straight out, unfortunately, so this time Bedford School will lose some ground and rugby find themselves in the same position they were in just moments ago. Such is the pace of the game. Now rugby looked to build on a great season that saw them win the uh, Roslyn Park Vars, of course. They also had wins against the likes of Aundel, Marlborough, Warwick, Cheltenham and Framlingham last season. They beat the Aundel side they have next week. The Aundel side that, of course, took down this Bedford side just a week ago. 24 points to 21. Good running from Jack Brown, who counts his first team debut amongst his biggest achievements in rugby. And now to the wide channels they go. Travis Ande, Coburn. Another substitute, Hugh Salvesson, who's come on into the front row. On for uh, Will Hosking, it seems. Little toe poke through there, and the chase is on. Gathered well by Bedford, but rugby go hunting for it, and they have turned it over. <laughs> Lovely play from rugby, and well, Gaffan wastes no time getting us back underway. Lovely offload. Jake Roberts brought to ground. The final offload, though, doesn't go to hand in search of Hugh Salvesson. A prop who can play both sides. Number 17. Replaces Will Hosking, and who can blame him? Such hard running from the front row in this first 18 minutes. Hugh Salveson can count himself as the sixth generation of his extended family to have uh, come through the pathways here at Rugby School. Uh, the white shirt is really in the blood for him. Scrum then, and an excellent shove from Salveson. Disrupting right from the very start.
Donny Wyman will have another feed at the scrum for Bedford vice captain. A good take from Oliver Simmons that chip through, but too much pressure on him. It was turned over. Well, it's another great scum from rugby, and this time they've turned it over. Trevor Sande in possession, Coburn stride, and lovely line by Pierce. Pierce steps off the right, looks to take on Agbenu through the hole. One more fend. What a wonderful try. And a wonderful story. Rufus Pierce, the vice captain. His very first start of the season following a really tough injury. And it's an excellent finish. Great turnover from rugby. who have had the better of the scrum so far. Lovely ball by Strydham to put in his new centre partner. Just steps off the right to take on Agbenu, then back inside. Fends off the last defender. Wonderful score. Through the hole, lovely line picked by Pierce. <coughs> Knows that taking on Agbenu for pace is foolish, so beats him with the left foot step. And there's nothing that Max Innes can do to prevent that score. Well, Jordan Stryden will have a, another opportunity to add the extras and extend this rugby lead to seven points. Lines up from far out on this left-hand side. Clean strike, but it'll fade to the left-hand side of the post as countless young rugby students scramble to gather the kick. There's a great feeling here in the round rugby school. Plenty of spectators from up and down different age groups. And for the first time in this game, Bedford find themselves behind. Drake Lee with another excellent kickoff. Good work from uh, Camvin to get a hand in there, but it's Bedford who do come away with it. And that's a thunderous tackle from rugby. Referee waves play on, but still Bedford come away with it. Another impeccable kickoff from Drake Lee and here he is again chipping it through in search of Agbenu but uh, the number 14 crept offside as he just buries his opposite man well that was a thunderous tackle it did come in before the whistle went Alfie Mitchell slowly back to his feet he certainly wouldn't want to be on the end of one of those from Ben Agbenu Well, penalty goes rugby's way. Well, uh, our referee Callum George is having a discussion with Ben Agbenu about his uh, possible late intervention. On the message is on board, so the game can continue. Well, it will be uh, the man who started at Chen, Jordan Strydham. Searching for touch and not finding it. So Drake Lee will come away with it, skipping through the tackles as he so often does. Brought down by Brown, but turned over at the breakdown. Excellent work by Roberts, who's keen to get us underway and goes charging through. Dragged down on the 22 meter. Travis Sande looking forward at the base, but it's picked by the captain Gaffan. Coburn at first receiver. Picked out by Bedford, and now they'll break. Lovely interception by Edward Bryars. Dragged down on the 10. Drake Lee gets us underway quickly. Rugby are over the breakdown once again. This time the penalty goes the other way. Well, it's a quick tap then from Wyman. Great thinking. And we could see a card here for the number 10, Jordan Strydham, who is hanging out at inside centre. Great thinking 
from Johnny Wyman, who uh, had the penalty advantage. Instead of playing with it, came, tap, came back to take the quick tap and forced a rugby player to intervene before retreating the required 10 metres. So rugby are down to 14 for the foreseeable. And Bedford have a penalty on the 22, which Freddie Drake Lee looks to be eyeing up the corner with. Well, we've seen one score already from a well-executed maul by Bedford School. Could there be another in the offing as Oscar Barker goes to collect the ball? Harry Payne, the line-out leader, it seems, at number five. Great interception by Briars. To the middle it goes to Payne. They try it again down the short side. This time Cracknell takes contact. Little show and go, but Rugby look to have turned it over. But there's a real mess at the breakdown. I think Bedford will come away with it. But eventually the penalty goes the way of the men in white. Hugh Salveson was in there to turn it over originally. Good counter ruck from Bedford, but they won't escape with possession. Penalty goes rugby's way. That breakdown was a real mess, but once again, the kick doesn't find touch, but Johnny Wyman can't take it. Earned his way into the Northampton Saints program, has Johnny Wyman with his impressive performances towards the back end of last season. And himself the vice captaincy here at Bedford, who have a long-standing connection with Northampton, of course. Well, that's an escape for rugby, really. Second time they've been able to f unable to find touch. But Travis Sande will have the scrum feed straight to floor. And our referee Callum George will have a a look at this reset. Zach de Gaal, new into the side a rugby scholar at lower sixth. Went straight to floor there, so we'll have another scrum. Well, Bedford came awfully close there to equalizing the score line from another creative Maul move. But a penalty following a turnover means Trevor Sande will have a scrum to play with. And Rugby straight away, crash it up through the center. Pierce into Wada and now taking contact at first receiver. Still a player down, of course, after Stridham saw the bin. And here's Canvin with another excellent run. Trevor Sande back down the short side. Another big carry, this time from Pietro Cecinato over the gain line, Trevor Sande. Coburn, excellent pass to find Canvin. Offloads to the skipper Gaffan, who frees the hands once more. Penalty advantage goes the way of rugby. Picked off the base by Gaffan, who's back to his feet and storming away. Gaffan steps inside and out. Lifts the ball. Coburn all the way wide. It's just off the foot. But eventually the penalty goes Bedford's way. And an uproar from rugby will leave them another 10 yards away. What an excellent turnover at the breakdown there. A huge intervention from Bedford as rugby were really rumbling on. Coburn with a beautiful pass into Canvin, who got the offload away, and then opportunistic stuff from Gaffan to break the line. And instead, we'll have a quick break in play.
quick Blake and Prey could lead to some changes here for rugby, who uh, the head coach, Mike Bailey, did say there would be some rotation, of course. Playing Saturday, then Wednesday, then Saturday again is a tough ask at this level. Heartbreak on Wednesday, of course. They're up by 21 points to eight. Aylibri brought it all the way back to 27-21. A late try, couldn't save rugby. And after all the injuries assessed, we'll get back underway. And it will be a penalty that Freddie Drake leave will look to pump downtown. Now Matthew Brown is on the field as well. who we missed the Halebury game after starting the very first, but he's back in contention here. Well, it'll be Bedford line out, claimed well in the air. Granger skipping through the first contact. Big physical carry from Ben Granger. Back down the short side they go with plenty of numbers. Lovely quick hands. Up to the 22 are Bedford. Gallagher. Into the breakdown go rugby. And it comes Wyman's way once more. Out the back, here they go. Great tackling from Rugby. But here's Simmons out to Agbenu, who bursts through the tackle. Dragged down by Wada. Drake Lee at first, receiver. Brought down again. Wyman still comes away with it. Granger. Chip cross field. Claimed in the air excellently well by Payne. Out the back door, he looks to free the hands, but driven into touch. Great defence by Coburn and Co. in that wide channel. What a lovely chip through, though, by Max Innes. Great work by Coburn, just a wrestle. That Bedford player into touch with a bit of help from Jack Brown. Well, the change seems to be... ..in the forward pack, where the front row now consists of Hosking, Gaffan and Brown. Camvin into the back row. And that's not straight in a dangerous position. What a difficult place for the ball to be turned over. Jack Brown claimed it well in the air, but a very difficult throw for Gaffan under so much pressure. Two pods up, both tongue and pain in the air for Bedford, and they've caused the disruption that they were after. Well, they've taken the line out. Claimed well by Payne. And this time it's a straight maul that they opt for. Rugby with a good counter. Sh Penalty advantage, though, for Bedford. Dangerous play for them now. Innes out the back to Lee. Threes the hands well. Simmons. Agbenu. Can't keep hold of it. But they're playing with penalty advantage. Well, Max Innes is really growing into this game. Lower six scholar came across from uh, Bedford Modern, the uh, hometown rivals, some could say. Controversial move for him, perhaps, but having an excellent last few moments here. This is great play. The little no look from Innes, excellent stuff, following his great cross ball kick as well. But they've taken contact here from the penalty, flicked wide. Driving over goes Zach de Gale. A move that's as old as rugby itself in the very oldest institution who played the game. A tap from five metres. And it's led to uh, the perfect end result. Well, there's some big bodies in this Bedford pack and with a player down. Zach de Gale had no intention of giving that ball at any point. Crashes over from five yards. Good work from Payne. Briars and Granger to recycle the ball so quickly. And with a player down rugby school, it's always going to be hard to stop 
Such a physical figure from five yards out. Well, Bedford have leveled it up, but Freddie Drake Lee will have the opportunity to put Bedford out in front. Another great contact, but this time, wide of the uprights. And that will bring an end to a thrilling first half of rugby here at the close on old big side. Last year, the final score was 29 apiece. And here at half time, 12 all could be on for another draw between these two famous old institutions. Well, an excellent first half of rugby will take you through all the action in the break. A thrilling first half of rugby that saw four great tries. It was the perfect start for Bedford, a well-worked move off the line out. Unselfish from Granger. to tee up Rupert Cracknell, who opened the scoring part of Bedford's team of the year across every school team at Bedford. But what a response from rugby with a penalty advantage. Rufus Pierce took it on his own shoulders to break the line and then two on one, Wada cuts inside. Excellent support play there from Pietro Cecinato as well. A good execution of the two on one. And then a turnover at the scrum. Once again, opportunistic stuff from Rufus Pierce. Breaks the line, steps off the right, and then cuts back in to beat Agbenu. What a day for Rufus Pierce. What a return to 15 aside rugby after a long sustained injury. And then vintage forward play from Bedford. Tapped five meters out. to send Zach de Gale crashing over to leave things 12 apiece at the break. Well, it really is all to play for in this second half of rugby, live here with Next Gen at Rugby School, where we will be for the remainder of this special 200th anniversary season of the game. Well, there is plenty of uh, thrilling rugby on throughout this period with the World Cup, but there is nothing more exciting than two of the very best schoolboy sides in the country. Going at it on one of the most famous and beautiful pitches in England. We'll return very shortly for the second half here, live with Next Gen as Bedford and Rugby sit 12 apiece at the break. We'll be back underway shortly here at Rugby School on the close. These pitches first laid in 1750. That's when this combined green space was formulated. And here at Old Big Side, the birthplace of rugby, we've had a thrilling first half. You couldn't ask for much more in 35 minutes of rugby. A yellow card, some excellent team tries. 
Some wonderful forward play, a real exhibition at the set piece by rugby. There's some great work at the mall by Bedford in response. Well, Freddie Drake Lee in his back line will have plenty of tricks left up their sleeve in the Bedford red, but it'll be Coburn to get us underway. And a great shot by Jack Roberts. Uh, Jake Roberts, sorry, for the start of the second half. Good carry by Barker. And a Benu on the short line. Rugby go herring into the breakdown, but the penalty goes their way. Drake Lee taps off the mark, so they'll come back to slow things down. But uh, the perfect exit for Bedford. And on this right-hand side, it'll be Max Innes to clear for touch. Does the job, finds the touchline. Perhaps not as many yards on it as Bedford would have hoped. Max Innes at 12, another player who found his way into the Bedford team of the week following his displays at Oundle last week. Just missed out on a great win there. Falling 24-21 in the end. Aounder with their first win at Bedford for five years. Well, since becoming a regular fixture in 2018, Bedford have failed to win in four attempts. Their draw last season, ending a run of heavy defeats, but they haven't had a win here, just to remind you, since 2010. That's the last time that rugby failed to beat Bedford at home. Things are teed up nicely here with a line out in Bedford's favour. Oh, break in play here is uh, Ben Agbeni receives some attention to his wrists from the man himself, James Hinkins. And there's just a drop of energy in the air, perhaps, at the start of this second half. Discussions between Drake Lee and Max Innes continue as they look to plan their way out of their own half. There's willing forward runners, Cracknell and Granger on his outside. A reminder then of their next games. Rugby school take on Aundel. Once again at home, of course, in this very special 200th anniversary year of the game. An Aundel side who beat this Bedford team by just three points. That's why the next gen, of course, as every game will be here at rugby school. But it's Bedford who come away with the line out. Payne again. It's done excellently well. And Agbenu has it in space, which is a dangerous thing for rugby. And through the hole he goes through the tackle, through another. Three men shrugged off by Ben Agbenu, but excellent work by uh, Oscar Tebbett, who's on the field at half-time to intercept. Travis Sande still on as well. Finding Sal at first receiver. And Coburn looks to carve through this Bedford defense. Travis Sande once more. Great running line, this time from Cecinato over the gain line once more. Trevor Sande back onto the field, of course, Striden from that yellow card. Rugby up to the 10. Sal Vesson, great carry. Coburn at first receiver. Pierce once again, Tebbett into Harry Tannett. And still on their 10 metre, our oh, rugby. That's a great carry from another substitute, Adam Virani. Replacing Monroe Hogg at half time. Trevor Sande goes short this time. Now a penalty advantage for rugby. So they've carried well up to halfway. And now they've got free ball to play with. Loose pass inside. No more penalty advantage. 
But Jake Roberts is keen to get us underway as quickly as possible. Lovely offload. Through the hole goes Robertson. Offloads once more to Sal Vesson. And now Rugby are inside the Bedford 22. Brown, Strydon, all the way wide they go. Bedford are in the breakdown. And Bedford have turned it over. Well, it's a wonderful intervention once again, just as rugby got started. They worked the ball really well with some high tempo play all the way up to the 22, but denied once more by this impressive Bedford school pack. Well, textbook stuff from Fergus Tongue. A really important turnover in the number four. And a great kick from Bedford. Another line out all the way up on the halfway. Actually, fantastic clearance kick this time. Bedford find themselves inside rugby's half with a line out to come. Bedford perhaps a touch lighter on bodies than rugby, but it's still Harry Payne dominating the line out and here's Granger at first receiver, puts in the offload. Once again, rugby are in the breakdown. But it's come Wyman's way as he looks to chip it through. And it's an excellent kick with little on for Bedford. Wyman stabs it through and now Rugby will have a line out under some serious pressure inside their 22. Well, it's been a really wonderful exhibition from Harry Payne in how to win a line out. He's around that area of the field with such precision and they'll stick two opposition jumpers up once more in red. This time, there's a dummy that puts Roberts in the air. But the line out wasn't straight in the end. And this area of the game that Bedford are starting to dominate could bear them some fruit in the next few phases. This time it's clean line out ball. Gallagher takes it and they're running hard at first receiver. Ferocious defending from Virani and rugby have turned it over. And at both ends of the field here, both sides are defending ferociously in their red zone. What a slight numerical mix up from us here. Matt Brown is at 17. And uh, Hugh Salvesa now on the field at 16 instead. Apologies to Matthew, whose contributions will be properly acknowledged from now on. So Hugh Salvesa sits at the back of the line out with Matt Brown at the front for rugby. Stolen by who else but Harry Payne. And his home crowd is being silenced by some excellent line out work from. Bedford and now Arthur Proctor just pumps the arms and gets in behind. Wonderful tackling from Virani. Wyman, Drake Lee, Akbenu with space to run in behind. Chopped down by Brown and over the ball go rugby, but Briars manages to clear it away. Quick tap from Wy Wyman. But uh, with two men on the floor, the referee calls a stop to his dart. Both sides keen to keep the ball going if they win penalties in their midfield. Looked like a turnover opportunity. Great chop tackle by Matt Brown. And the call is to go for posts. Some mature play from Freddie Drake Lee. I imagine he would have caught the England game on the weekend. And these three points will take his Bedford side 15-12 to the good. 
against the white of rugby on their home turf. Crucial stage of the game, neither side able to convert opportunities from inside the opposition's 22. So Freddie Drake Lee will back himself from the tee. And Bedford will start again from the restart. As the bells toll at rugby school, Freddie Drake Lee has no problem converting flat and low and brings his side 15-12 to the good. And Bedford are in the lead. Looking for their first win at the close since 2010. 13 years without a victory at rugby school. They lead for the second time in this game. Well, number 19, Adam Birani, he's had an excellent start to the game in defence. One to watch out for in this second half, but it'll be Alfie Coburn. Saracens and Scottish Exiles who will get the underway. And it looks like Wada has scrambled on the loose ball, but it's popped out the way of Bedford, not legally though. So instead, Jordan Strider will kick to the corner. Took a break from rugby for almost two years at the age of 13. Picked it back up again, of course, and has grown into a fine player at number 10. Shifted into the centres following the departure of Nathaniel Kayada. A real shame. He's an excellent attacking threat. Best opportunity of this second half, perhaps, then, for rugby. To the front they go, claimed by Sam Bird of the Leicester Tigers, but denied by Bedford in emphatic fashion. Well, that was some seriously impressive line-out defence, this time from the floor. But the original knock-on will lead to a line-out in favour of Bedford. He'll be perfectly comfortable, you feel, in this position. Stolen, though, this time by Bird. Great intervention from the substitute. And Rugby will have possession inside the 22. Hard running by Cecinato. Shavastrande still on at nine. Finds Sylvester, who's a little bit isolated in there, and Bedford could benefit from that, and they do. Huge turnover. On, ben Granger. And even inside their 22, they're tapping quick. Lovely little turn from Cracknell. Drake Lee screaming for it on the short side. Inside ball. Back to Drake Lee. Looking to free up the hands, but it came off a rugby player. So play on, says the referee, and it's been chipped through to the corner. Oscar Tebbett will win the race. Shotted by Oliver Smith. And the loose ball has been dotted down. And Bedford cry. They think they've scored it, but instead it's a penalty that goes rugby way. How close were Bedford there to dotting down? Well, it was an offload that came off Rufus Pierce in the referee's mind, hacked through by Bedford. Great work from the substitute, Oscar Tebbett, to carry into contact. And then a Bedford player just went flying into the breakdown. Harry Payne in from the side, I believe is the call. Well, a little break in play as Jordan Strydham stayed down at that initial stage. So a great escape for rugby. And they're not out of the woods there yet as a, a line-out ensues. 
Well, that's the call from uh, Bedford. We will win this ball. Threatening stuff indeed, given their record at the line out. Harry Payne will no doubt be after this once more, as will Fergus Tongue. They'll put two jumpers in the air. Five man line out for rugby, headed by the substitute, Matt Brown. Monroe Hogg to throw. Claimed in the air this time by Bird. Well, it's a wonderful carry as well by Virani. Trevor Sande still at nine. Coburn, hard line by Pierce, who looks to free up the offload. Excellent ga gather by Jake Roberts. And now rugby are flying up to the 22. Sniped by Trevor Sande. Loosely gathered in the end by Sam Bird. Trevor Sande back at nine. Brown. Excellent carry over the gain line. Well, Pierce is on the floor, but Irani still carrying through the contact. Puts Cracknell to deck, and Shavashande will still play. Sylvester with the offload. All the way wide it goes to Harry Tannett, who's through one defender. Great work by Tannett to free up the hands. Mon here's Monroe Hogg. Huge ruck. By Jordan destroyed and went flying in. Great carry by Brown once more. Rugby just obliterating in the clear out. Lovely carry from Cecinato, set up the very first try for rugby. But it's been intercepted by Bedford. But the penalty goes the way of rugby, playing with the advantage. Some ferocious carrying in there. And some great work at the breakdown, just blowing Bedford away. Creating the quick ball that allowed more and more forward runners to carry hard. And this is an excellent opportunity for rugby, who still trail by three points at the home turf, yet to win a fixture this season at the close. As Brown just received some treatment after a couple of seriously impressive carries. Rugby look to be prepping some more changes as they look to rotate their squad ahead of their congested fixture list. Well, Sal Vesson with a great offload in there. And Cecinato has been uh, <laughs> dogged in his support play throughout. As has Monroe Hogg, who's on line out duty at the moment. First start of the season for Monroe Hogg, who came in for Adam Virani, who's now back on the field. Scrum then. That was the penalty of choice for Rugby. Pierce looks to flick it out the back. It's been spilled though by Stridham. Not the most sympathetic pass. So just a knock on, and Bedford will have possession once more. Well, another wasted opportunity, unfortunately, for the men in white, who are, uh, not to say running out of time, where it's 90 minutes still remaining for them. They only trail by three, but unable to convert from uh, close range. And now Johnny Wyman will have the feed at scrum time. Solid scrum from rugby as they look to disrupt, but Wyman comes away with it. Drake Lee, Agbenu taking on two defenders, puts in the fend. Agbenu in behind. Coburn with the tackle, or Tabbitt even with a tackle this time. Wyman hooks it over the top. It'll bounce loosely to Strydon. Strydon takes on a Bedford defender, but will be really to touch. Excellent defending by Oliver Smith. 
Well, a great chase by Smith. Stride and Fordy beating him on the outside, but Smith came back to drag him into touch. Oliver Smith, he broke his ankle last year. Hardly played, but he came in for Fabian Y. Roberts today for his debut. And he hasn't had uh, all the time he'd want on the ball, but great defense from him there. And he's forced this great opportunity. Well, play on is the call. Oscar Barker just looked to find Briars short at the line out. Bit of a mix up there, but always backwards, says the referee. Wyman. Granger at first receiver. Over the game line he goes. Quick ball now for Bedford. Freddie Drake Lee. Innes picked off by Rufus Pierce. Frees up the offload and another for Wada. And now Wada looks to play with broken field in front of him. Still they free the hands. There's the hard line. Spilt but only backwards. Finally an offside line formed on halfway. Innes goes in to turn it over and Bedford have stolen it and they'll play with advantage. Powerful stuff, it's Proctor in the end who comes away with it. Great turnover from Arthur Proctor. Bedford all wrapped up on the halfway. In goes Harry Payne. An eventual stoppage in play because of a potential injury. I believe Bedford were playing with penalty advantage. Another thrilling exchange in play there. The score remains 15-12 in Bedford's favour, but a promising attack turned into some scrambled offence by uh, Rufus Pierce, who's been everywhere today for rugby. Great turnover by Arthur Proctor at 13. Another one with a long-term injury. Did his ACL last season, but managed to uh, join Bedford on their pre-season tour of Australia. Back in the side at 13. Well, there's been a fair few stoppages today. Some weary bodies on field. Will Hosking is back on for rugby. chance for both sides to regroup I believe it will be a penalty to Bedford to get us back underway and uh, Pietro Cecinato will leave the field as well he's had an excellent game and that's a textbook turnover really from Proctor Well, it will be a scrum in the end for Bedford. Play paused so the injuries could be dealt with, but they'll be happy with this attacking position if they can win clean ball at their own set piece. It's a good shove this time from Bedford, and Wyman finds Drake Lee, who cuts back on the inside, breaks through a couple of tackles. Quick ball. Wyman puts it to the toe once more, and Agbenu could be herring after it. But touch found. And with their impressive line out, this is another opportunity for Bedford to steal some rugby possession. Sam Bird on the field, though, at 18, seems to have fixed up the line out. One can never speak too soon. The Leicester Tigers second row has a big job here to make sure rugby retain their own possession from the line out. Well, rugby come away with it, but it isn't clean. And they'll look to exit from inside their 22. Good carry from Monroe Hogg. Into the hands of Strydon. Pierce lofted over the top to Tannett. Chopped down by Oliver Smith. Picked at the base. Good run by Strydon as they look to exit. Trevor Sande. Short ball. And a good carry from Bird. Trevor Sande, Coburn at first receiver, well held by Roberts, up to the 10 metre. Well, they're calling for it out wide. Flicked over the top by the substitute, Tebbett, and cleaned up by Wada. Good carry from Sal Vesson, and they're still on the 10 rugby. So 
So Shravasande puts it to the toe. Simmons is underneath it. Agbenu will return fire. And it's a well-weighted kick, but unfortunately just too heavy. So Rugby have won that exchange. And they'll have their own line out all the way on Bedford's 10 metre. 13 minutes to go. Bedford lead by three from a Freddie Drake lead penalty. After an excellent Rufus Pierce score, put them ahead. Well, Zach de Gaulle equalised, Zach de Gaulle, sorry, equalised from a five metre penalty. And now the game is finely tuned as Bedford hope to have stole that line out, but it will come on the white side. Adam Irani, little show and go, stride him in the forward pod, carrying well. Looked to offload it, but the ball went forward, and now Bedford will drive away with possession. It will come out for Johnny Wyman. A little play from here, Agbenu, well gathered. Bit of space in the wide channel then for the first time for Smith. Proctor in support. A good attempt to steal from Pierce, but Granger comes away with it. Barker. Wyman at the base once more. Little flick inside for Agben, who goes herring away, breaking through three or four contacts. There's the offload. Race alive for Simmons. Huge cover and tackle by Pierce. And it's been stolen at the breakdown by Jack Brown. Over the ball go Bedford, however. And rugby escape with just a knock on. Well, it was so casual from Ben Agbenu, who's just loitering around the breakdown. Johnny Wyman picked and swung it back inside, and then almost, almost a wonderful turnover from Bedford. But a knock on means it will be rugby possession deep inside their own 22. A huge opportunity for Bedford to disrupt. Briars and Zach DeGale still in the front row. It's been a long game for them with just over 10 minutes to go here. But Luke Shravasande, the former Shark, will have the feed. And Bedford looked to disrupt, but it's a good scrum in the end from Rugby. And they look to break from deep inside their own half. Wada with a testing ball, but now he's got a bit of space to run into. Round the side of Agbenu takes contact. Great work from Rugby to free up the hands, but the ball's gone loose. Granger will go herring after it. It comes the way of Bedford, and suddenly they're five metres out. Pick from the base. Payne with possession, flicks it on. And they're over. What a score. It's a huge moment in the game with just 10 minutes to go. Bedford have extended their advantage. Well, it was a good break from Wada, but this is testing stuff in your own half. Granger chipped it through and latches onto it. Picked at the base quickly and then Payne goes in. And it's a wonderful line in the end. Running from deep to crash over. That's a really difficult ball for Strydon to take. And once they're in this five meter, quick thinking from Proctor to go hunting for it. Payne could go himself, but instead running from deep, the powerful Ben Agbenu scores. That's his second try of the season. And Bedford go 20 points to 12 in front. Drake Lee doesn't have the distance this time. Rugby trail by eight with just over 10 minutes to go. Well, the momentum in this game was just starting to go the way of the home side. But after an excellent break by Bedford, they kept rugby playing inside their own 22, forced the mistake, some good pressure in defence and clinical stuff from the men in red, looking for their first win of the season. Now rugby will get us back underway once more. Alfie Coburn, a deeper kick this time, finds the try scorer Agbenu, 
who just takes a step in touch. An excellent kickoff in the end. And rugby are in need of a response here. They have little time left to score the eight points required just to level the game. Could there be another draw on the cards, just as there was last season? Line out for rugby. Tongue and Payne will go up once more to compete. The Bird's there now to steady the ship. And up goes Bird. Comes away with it. Good carry from Jack Brown. Up to the 22. Big opportunity then for rugby. Coburn, Pierce, Wada. Wada takes it to the line. Bursting through the tackles. Lovely offload. In goes Tannett. Harry Tannett scores in the corner. And knows there's still a job to do as he retreats back into his own half. But it's a great run from Wada and a lovely finish from Tannett. Great support play from the young winger. And two members of that Roslyn Park Vars winning side linking up here. Good running lines from Rugby and Wada bursting through the tackles. Just gets in behind Oliver Simmons. Well, it's an excellent run, wasn't it, from Jack Brown to begin it all. Quick ball for Rugby. Tebbett now in at nine, and then Wada just splitting two defenders. Tannett runs the short line and has the legs to finish beyond the onrushing Rupert Cracknell. Three points is the difference. Coburn with the opportunity to cut the gap to one. It's an excellent kick. Pierces the uprights with ease. Alfie Coburn and Harry Tannett have just put rugby Right back in contention, 20 points to 19, Bedford lead. With only a short time remaining on Callum George's clock. Well, Freddie Drake Lee's restarts have been uh, serious all day, and this time it's just a little too deep to contest. Pierce stepping off the left. Ingo Bedford cleared away, Hosking picks, crashing up to the 10 meter, in goes Payne. Cleared out emphatically by Bird. Hard line by Roberts and the momentum just turning towards the home size. Tebbett now at nine. Stride him out in the center still. Bird breaking the contact. In goes Hosking to support. Tebbett, Coburn, just spilt by Roberts, who picked a great line once more. Well, Jake Roberts certainly knows how to pick a hard line. If he could only latch on to a few more of them, would have made plenty more meters today, but a good game from him so far. Dangerous, the number eight. Well, it will be a scrum then for Bedford. A big moment in the game for them. They lead by one point with under 10 minutes to go. Johnny Wyman will have the feed. Hosking and Sal Vessen in the front row for rugby looking to disrupt. There's a bit of movement in there. Bedford get the shove on and it's picked by Granger at the base. And here's the strike move from Drake Lee. Agbenu. Agbenu with a bit of space to run into, carving through. Ben Agbenu goes for the corner. One man to beat. What a try. What a moment to do it. Bedford extend their advantage with moments to go. Another try for Ben Agbenu. The decision to move him from the centres out to the wing, bearing fruit for Bedford. Just cutting through the rugby defence. And one man outside him in support to draw the defenders away. It's an excellent finish. And a great time to do so as well. 25-19. 
Bedford could look to establish their seven point. They're at eight point margin even at this point in the game. If Freddie Drake Lee can pierce the uprights once more. And he does. Eight points is the difference. And rugby uh, had the momentum over the last 10 minutes or so. Well, what a try by Ben Agbenu. Put Bedford out in front once more. So they re-establish their advantage. Coburn will get us underway. A testing kickoff and Bird gets underneath it but knocked forward. Agbenu looks to pick it up and play but uh, unable to cleanly gather. Scrum then for Bedford inside their own 10 metre. Can they see out this final seven minutes or so? That's what's left on our clock here. Live with Next Gen at Rugby School on Old Big Side at the home of rugby, celebrating its 200th anniversary. Rugby just yet to get off the mark this season. A 24-42 loss to an impressive Oakham side. A heartbreaking one-point loss to Halebury on Wednesday. And now Bedford lead by eight. Drake Lee looks to clear, but it's been charged down. It'll come the way of Rufus Pierce, who flicks the ball away. Hogg just battling for it in there. Roberts over the gain line once more. In go Bedford to disrupt, but not cleanly. Tebbett, Coburn, Virani with a hard carry. Bit of pressure on Tebbett there, but he gets it away to Coburn in the end, who has to carry himself. Rugby still in possession. Hosking picks from the base, dragged down, over the ball goes Zach de Gaal, but not legally so, and now it's a penalty for Rugby. Well, big decisions here for the uh, senior leadership team of those rugby players. The likes of Jack Brown and Coburn in there and Bird discussing what to do next. Good carry from Hosking. He may be isolated, but uh, Zach Degal just not quick enough there. They trail by eight, over five minutes to go. Do they take the points? And then retain possession from the kickoff and look to build in the final stage of the game. Or do they go for the corner here, knowing that only one point will be needed if they can convert their try? Big decisions on the biggest stage of schoolboy rugby here at Rugby School. Jordan Stryden will uh, be the one on kicking duty. if that option is taken and points is the option that rugby opt for at this stage in the game to cut the gap to just five with about five minutes remaining well in fact it'll be uh, Coburn on kicking duty as he slotted that excellent conversion from this near right-hand side. Alfie Coburn will have another opportunity to add to his tally this afternoon. From out in front. Unsuccessful from the penalty. So instead it will be a 22 dropout for Bedford. Well, that is unfortunate. Alfie Coburn nailed an absolute peach of a conversion from the, uh, this uh, right-hand side, but under the pressure there, Freddie Drake Lee will look to clear, and one bounce into touch, a good clearance. So it will be a line-out for rugby. Certainly not out of this game yet, but time is ebbing away for them. They trail by eight points, following an excellent try by Ben Agbenu.
Monroe Hogg with the throw. He'll be picking out Sam Bird. Roberts leads the line out and it's Roberts who will go up and take it, but that ball was just caught in the wind. Not straight is the call. And a scrum will be taken by Bedford. Well, the old clock chimes here at rugby school once more. Does that bell indicate that uh, time may be nearly up for rugby? Wyman with the feed. Bedford have just sorted out their uh, scrum in this second half. Rugby looked to disrupt in the early stages. A turnover, of course, led to their second try. Wyman with the feed. This time it spits out right away. And Drake Lee can play away. Innes. Agbenu breaking through the contact. Wada brings him down. And an excellent intervention from Dehiru Wada. What a battle today between those two expansive rugby players. But in the end, Wada dislodges the ball and turns it over for rugby. Well, if Agbenu got away there, that certainly would have been lights out for the host. But as it stands, They've got a bit of time left. If they can score off the first few phases, who knows? There's still plenty to play for here on old big side. Stolen in the air by Bedford. Well, the ball will go the red side and Wyman will put it to the boot once more. Testing take for Stridham. Straight out. But that's enough for Bedford. Well, just as the momentum looked to swing the way of the host once more, a crushing blow from Ben Agbenu, who re-established Bedford's advantage in the second half, and rugby just couldn't finish from inside the 22 of Bedford towards the end of this game. Bedford escaped, cleared the ball upfield, ran down the clock, and Bedford have their first win of the season in their second outing while rugby Still go searching for theirs. Another excellent advertisement for the game of schoolboy rugby, but at uh, the home of rugby itself, they're still looking for their first win of the season. Final score here at the close. Rugby 19, Bedford 27. We'll take you through all of the tries in this thrilling encounter in just a moment. Well, here's how it all began then, with an excellent set piece from Bedford. And, uh, well, what a testament to what the game was going to become. Their line out exceptional today. In the end, Rupert Cracknell goes crashing over. But uh, rugby certainly had a response. With a penalty advantage. And his first appearance of the season following a long term out with injury, Rufus Pierce entered the line, freed up the hands. Cecchinato executed the two on one, and Wada with a lovely step to beat Johnny Wyman. All square then, wasn't long until Bedford re established their advantage. Oh, sorry, rugby stretched out in front for the first time. Once again, an excellent line by Pierce, stepping off the right. Takes an awful lot of skill to beat Ben Egbenu in defence, but what a try by Rufus Pierce, who had a fantastic day for rugby. And it was through the forwards that Bedford School responded once again. As I said earlier, the, the oldest of set-piece moves at the oldest rugby ground there is. Great hands this time from Rupert Cracknell. Try and an assist for him today to put in Zach de Gaulle. That had all things all level at the break. At the start of the second half, though, Bedford forced a mistake from rugby and from deep, Ben Agbenu takes the hard line and crashes over despite the best efforts of Rufus Pierce. And then just a wonderful try from Ben Agbenu. Took the ball deep and side through the rugby defence to dot down. 
And that all but took the game beyond the host, despite uh, Harry Tannett's score in the corner just before that. A penalty apiece for Freddie Drake Lee. I'm oh, sorry, just the penalty for Freddie Drake Lee rounds out the scoring. So once again, not the day that rugby wanted, as we will see that uh, Harry Tennant score. Good hard running from rugby. And then clinical stuff from the backs. Wada, dangerous as always, draws in two defenders, creates the hole, frees the offload, and Tannett scores. Well then, history makers, this Bedford side, the first Bedford team to win here at the close since 2010. The 13-year wait for a Bedford victory is over. Just for some context, that since 2018, this became a regular fixture. It was four heavy defeats, including in by margins of, of 60 and 50 points before a 29-all draw last year. That was the turning point, really, for Bedford, who have come here today and beaten rugby on the home turf by 27 points to 19. Well, another thrilling instalment in uh, rugby school's season as they celebrate the 200th anniversary of this most wonderful game. They're still searching for their first win of the season, but uh, do tune in every time they're on the field because it's been exciting every single game so far. Well, it was really the uh, Ben Ag Benu show here as Bedford, his two tries, put the game beyond rugby. A wonderful introduction back to the game for Rufus Pierce. Had a truly fantastic game for the men in white. That will bring an end to our coverage here this afternoon of a thrilling encounter between Bedford and Rugby School. Bedford for the first time since 2010 win away here at Rugby School by a scoreline of 27 to 19. I've been Wilfred Kemsey live here with Next Gen and tune in shortly at uh, Next Gen's YouTube channel for our next installment of Schoolboy Rugby. Perhaps some of the best schoolboy rugby to be found in the world. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.